Hello everyone, I'm Chester44, I'll see you in this fly, and welcome to this let's play of Pillars of Eternity 2, Deadfire. Last episode I believe we'd taken care of a few, uh, well, it was mostly just taking care of management, the group and such, and our party is all set up and good and all that kind of stuff. We're fine. That said, we gotta do some running around and actually get, need to go and talk to the queen and some other people. So how about we do just that? Come on. There we go. Nothing to say? Okay. Oh, we can easily make our way over there. Just head to the exit. And head up to Serpent's Crown. I think the rooftop will work. You hear someone call out for your attention. Oh! Someone needs us. You're wandering through the streets when a man approaches you, cutting through the crowd. You've never seen him, but the look in his eyes suggests that he recognizes you. Watcher! Let me through. A meadow folk man emerges from the crowd, red-faced and wild-haired. He pays no mind to the irritated pedestrians glowering at him. His bright eyes are fixed on you. You're looking... Oh, you're looking fervent as always, Lathan. Jody juts her chin in brusque greeting. In response, the missionary puffs out a breath. Suppose that was a compliment coming from you. Indeed, I strive to follow the light. And godliness. Of course it was. I mean, why wouldn't it be? Jody's words speak to innocence, but her grin is too, ro too rough, too wolfish. Uh... Then allow me to return the gesture. I'd say you seem darker than usual, Harvester. It shrouds you. All that death and heresy. Reckon I'll hold my tongue from now on. Jody immediately bristles. Ignoring her hard scowl, Lathern re resettles his gaze on you. You're the one who what saw the miracle when Aethus rose at Cab Nua. Awe and conviction quiver in his voice. And you must be Lathern. You left Asongo just before Aethus arrived. I knew it. Our paths were meant to cross. Our people talk highly of you. It's no wonder Aethus chose you to witness his return. That's why I'm hoping you can help. The tiniest flicker of doubt dances across his face. He banishes it with a deep breath and launches into his tail. I've been having strange dreams. A wheel that spins and spins. An orchard of koiki trees, each grown from the fallen fruit of the last. He scratches at his whiskered chin. Then the spokes of the wheel break apart. The trees stop growing. Fruit falls and rots until the ground is covered with festering, stinking pulp. Why are you telling me? He takes a deep breath. In these dreams I also see you. At the center of the wheel. In the middle of the orchard. You were there when Aethys rose. And you seem to follow every place he's been. He works his mouth into a fretful pout as he gets to the crux of, it, of his concerns. Aethys has always meant rebirth and redemption. But so much death follows in his wake. Both in the Saints War and now here. Again. His wide eyes are full of questions. <laughs> Is this what I sound like? Adair gives you a guilty grimace. He turns toward Lathern. Friend, I'd love to buy you a drink if it'd help. He shakes his head, the anxiety mounting behind his eyes. I need to know what this means. Please! I'm sorry, but I don't really know. There are no easy answers. My people followed Aethus to war once. I wonder sometimes if we failed him when we lost. Or if we did that the moment we laid hand to Blade. Please, you've seen more than anyone. You've got to have some idea of what it all means. 
and how we make sense of it. Oh boy, that's a lot. Uh... I'm sorry, I can't tell you how to respond. You have to figure this out for yourself. Lathern nods, letting me sink in. I won't keep you, but you've given me a lot to think about. Thank you. He turns away and allows himself to melt into the crowd. Sometimes it's something that you need to figure out yourself. All right, let's speak with the queen. She did request our presence. Heaven only knows what she wants from us. You return intact. Nagati is not always kind to those who travel upon her domain. Onikaza touches her brown brow and nods. A messenger from the jaws of Tangaloa speaks with the voice of wisdom and change, I say. She raises her brows at you. It is fitting that yours should be the voice that tells of Hasongo's fate. What did you see there? Some Naga occupied the colony after Aethys drained the Adra. I let them live. The snakes are on edge. Where comes this new boldness? Onikaza thumbs her chin and narrows her eyes. Far be it for me to complain if they make trouble for outsiders. There is a weariness to her thoughts that she doesn't bother to hide. What of Aethys? If you know why he terrorizes the dead fire, speak on. He makes for Magran's teeth, but I believe that is only a waypoint. Tapping her chin, Onikaza nods and weighs the matter. At length, her even expression spreads into a pleased and knowing smile. If Aethys makes for Magran's teeth, I say the Rathun will grind him to dust for the praise of their warrior matron. Even if they fail, it will be an enemy cleared for my plate. This is the gratitude of Nagati, I say. Rathun. The fiery children of Magrin, devoted to their mother with a fanatic zeal. Bothersome, but the least of my troubles now. From Port Maje to Hasongo to Magrin's teeth, Aethys follows a rich vein of Adra. It takes him northeast to more interesting territory. In the deepest memory of the tribes, we have told stories of Magrin's teeth. Embellished sailors' fables, Akira, but not without some truth. My people speak of treacherous seas, lakes of fire, and the ancient warriors hammered to life on Magrin's anvil. Onikaza props her chin on her fist and looks you up and down. Ashen Maw is the grandest and most accessible of the peaks. It is the sharpest tooth in Magrin's jaw. Prepare yourself for a fight. Any chance of support ships to accompany Voyager? Akira, would that our resources were not so entangled in other parts. I cannot send ships to Magrin's teeth any more than I would send paper dolls to a furnace. She arches her fingers together, staring intently at the point in space where they meet. If you make preparations in Nekataka, I say we can help each other. She sits up straighter and regards you with a level expression. I must keep the city's peace. And I have only so many arms and eyes. While the dead fire screams, I would see Nekataka outlast the storm to come. And what do you need from me? What I need is a lasting peace that will outlive my dynasty. But I will accept peace of mind for now. What do you know of my water shapers, Herald of Bereth? I know they gave Rawatai no end of trouble in their early advance. Akira... If you recall history, then you know why I am protective over the guild. My water shapers are the levy holding back Rawatai's advance. An adept standing at the prow of a war canoe is enough to send the fleet scrambling for the shallows. Don't get too cozy, Highness. That false sense of security will get you into trouble. Akira, I would not want your employers to think me easy prey. I'm sure. This reminds me. I owe the Hazanui a basket of koiki in remembrance of the Battle of Nakaroatl. She snaps her fingers and nods to an attendant who scurries off. Sounds like a kind gesture. Akira, you think so? I am counting on the Hazanui seeing through my condolences. 
Hanekaza smiles to herself. While the problems of Aethys and overindulgent admirals plague these waters, I have summoned the masters of water shaping to Nekataka. Pit your strongest water wizards against their weight in iron and black powder, Highness. We can end this quickly. Akira, and how long will this contest last in open water? Onikaza tuts at Maya before shifting her focus back to you. Now would be the time to confer with Guildmaster Mairu, but she does not answer my summons. Onikaza looks down on her city. Her hand squeezes down on the armrest. Do you think something is wrong? It is too early to grow a forest from this coconut, but I would not dispatch you if I felt at ease. The guild can suffer no setbacks. If Myru shirks her duties, her queen would know the reason. She stares off into the distance and sighs, her gaze unfixed. Nagati, do not abandon us now. Onikaza turns her gaze back to you and flinches. This was not a thought she intended to share. Hmm. And it is recommended that we bring, uh... I'm blanking on his name. But that companion. So we will deal with that later. We have. Oop, wrong button. But we do have other things to deal with first. So. Oh! Maya leveled up! Alright, we'll take care of that. Hello, Carbine. <laughs> Sorry about that. Maya, you gotta level up. We'll give you a point in stealth and a point in survival. And you got two points here. So you have improved critical, spell resistance. When hurt or better, the ranger and their animal companion both gain an accuracy bonus against any enemies that are bloodied or worse. You've also got play dead. Eh, don't know about that one. Not sure about that. There aren't really any that I find that good here. Okay, let me go back. Let me see... what about this one? Hmm... Two-handed style, you're good with that. Marksman would actually be good to have, I think. Okay, that's melee, so that's not something to do. Ooh, one of these, actually. Or... No, that's Animal Companion. So, you have Wounding Shot, raw damage over time. The other option is Hobbles, no. Aim becomes far more accurate. That... Actually sounds tempting. Yeah, I'll go with that one. Alright, there you go, Maya. Now, as we were doing... My brothers and sisters have set sail for Nekataka. I thought the tribes needed them to calm the weather. The greater... Okay. We're out into Serpent's Crown, and from here... I go this way. Our next stop is going to be way to the south. In the Brass Citadel. Lower Imperial Command, I believe we need to go to. Afterwards, we'll head up to the Sacred Stair and take care of the uh, quest we got for Adair. Maybe it's at Sor- yeah, I think it's at Sora's office we're supposed to go to. Rhyming Hazanui with Kablooey? I can't think of anything else that goes with Hazanui. Hello, at Sora. Clear skies. Okay, it's not at Sora we're supposed to talk to then. Me neither. Must That's be someone upstairs. My mistake, I went to the wrong room. Oops. Or wrong floor, I mean.
Hazunui Karu. There, that's who we're probably supposed to go. You know, we are doing some things for Good you guys. You again. No, I guess not. Okay. Let's head up into here then. Grand Secretary Atsura wants to meet with you. So, what was with all the black powder at Hasongo? Oh, Atsura wants to meet with me? A look of surprise passes over her face. She tries to cover it with a grunt. Notice that, did you? Saltpeter is one of our chief resources at Rawatai. And we believe in putting resources to use. Now you can see why we didn't want the Valians nosing around our fort. Did you get Queen Onikaza's fruit basket? Her expression darkens and she draws on her pipe. I got our message all right. She sighs angrily, smoke filtering through her teeth. Okay, so Atsura does want to speak with us. Apparently. I mean, I just tried, but he didn't have anything to say, weirdly. Let's try again. Clear skies. What exactly is the brass citadel? He hesitates, looking at you as if the answer is obvious. It's a trading post, of course. I just did. You seem How different. Do you, mean that? you know exactly what I mean. Are you making advances at me? It's no. for the best. This would be a most inconvenient time to begin an attack. It's weird that she says Atsura wants to talk to me, but clearly Atsura does not want to talk to me. Which makes this weird. What the hell? But okay then. Fine, let's head out. unhealthy to carry a lantern full of lost souls you mean like if I keep at it they're gonna do something worse than give me nightmares I suppose we're past the point of unhealthy hmm my hands are feeling better will you join yet you know, oh I've heard stories about you people around Nekataka seem to think a lot of you I could probably use the good influence especially with the way my last posting ended I'll see you on board Captain. She crosses her forearms and salute to you, then makes a rude gesture at the rest of the district. Hey, there we go. We got another companion, another uh, crew member. Let me see what she's got. She is a very good cannoneer. We did buy a new cannoneer. But she's only two. You are three. Okay, I will take you then. You're a better cannoneer. It only makes sense. We want a good cannoneer here. Also, we don't really have any colors, I just realized. There we go. Ship is now fixed up a bit more. Now, let's go take care of the quest we have for uh, Adair. Up in the Sacred Stair, we want to go to the Temple of Gaon, I believe. Got someone there to talk to. Agna, you're who we need to talk to. This woman's unceasing smile and direct, violating gaze give the strong impression of someone selling something. Light of Aethys be upon you. Byrne said you could tell us about the partisans of the Lighted Path. Your friend guided you truly. Gadarian Bosch has honored me with the duty of helping his message reach all of the faithful. We answer the Shining God's call. He shows us the way and we march in his wake. Already the Vanguard prepares to make its journey, with more soon to follow. How would you join up with Aethys? Uh, chase him in a boat? Yes, in fact. We will follow him along the lighted path. Okay, then. When the time is right, he will welcome our souls into his legion. Gadarian Bosch has seen it. Uh, just your souls, then? Not, uh, not your bodies? Your journey sounds dangerous. 
The Shining God demands total commitment from his followers. What good is a soldier who is not willing to make the ultimate sacrifice for her cause? A living one. To walk the lighted path, one must be willing to never turn back. Uh, tough to walk very far without a soul. The Holoborn, huh? Usually you'd have to stack him in a wheelbarrow and push him around. Who are the Vanguard? Gadarian Bosch leads the Vanguard. They are the most righteous of the Partisans. They will be the first to join the ranks of Aethys. The first to charge at his call. Adair leans in toward you. Baron said something about the Vanguard. You don't think he's that dumb, do you? Agni's eyes shift momentarily to Adair, then back to you. She says nothing, merely re-raising her smile. Do you have a list of people in the Vanguard? We want to see if our friend is among them. The Vanguard know their own, and Gadarian Bosch knows them. Beyond that, we keep such information private. Adair turns his head away to look to hide a look of exasperation. But then his, it shifts, his eyes suddenly hopeful. He looks back at Ogna. If they know their own, what do you think they'd say to a couple new members? Can we be in the Vanguard too? I'm afraid you cannot. The Vanguard is reserved for the most faithful among us. You have not even joined the Partisans. Hmm. That I have only just learned of the Partisans is circumstance, not a measure of faith. How right you are. Forgive me. I did not mean to cast doubt on your character. Unfortunately, even if I were to initiate you right now into our order, it would be too late to join the Vanguard. Their ship is docked right now in Nekataka and set to depart at any moment. Adair looks at you with wide eyes. You think he could be on it? If he left right after we did, we gotta go. They won't take you, but there will be more ships to follow. Stay and learn about the partisans of the Lydic Path, and I'll see that there is room for you. Uh, that's a real nice offer. We'll uh, think about it and get back to you. Agna nods, her expression no different than it was when you arrived. All right, uh, we need to get down there. Ship is docked in Nekataka. I think that means we need to go to the docks. I mean, where the hell else? Queen's Birth, I believe it is. Uh, we'll go down to here. We'll take care of the other side quest soon. South exit. There we go. Quick, to Queen's Birth. Alright. There we are. Not sure where exactly. We can try going up to here. The rays of his countenance bathe the world. <sighs> we missed it. God ah, damn it. They're gonna park that thing next to Aethys and slit their own throats. I wish they'd gone ahead with it before they got Baron involved. If we can't catch it, can you promise me we'll go right now? We'll get there when we're able. All right, just let's not be late. Pursue the lighted path ship. I have a feeling we need to actually go out to him. In fact, we should. Let's do it right now. We'll probably see it on the map. There he is, Galarian Bosch, get on to him. A gift from Aethys, glorious death is our path to him. Uh oh. Well, we can take him down at least. Lavar 
I mean, the good news is we can take care of him relatively easily. Okay, they're taken down. Sure. Loot what you can from the bodies. Okay, that's all of them. Let's head below decks. See if we can find the guy. The others have drunk, Baron. Their souls make their way to Aethus. Oh no. This isn't the time for hesitation. It's the time for faith. Come. Let us show him together. The man uncorks a vial hanging from his neck, filled with a viscous fluid of earthy red. He raises it and waits. With unsteady hands, Baron uncorks an identical vial hanging from his own neck. No, 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 kid! Adair has stepped forward. His palms are outstretched. Beern nearly drops the vial. He catches awkward hold of it between his forefingers. His gaze drifts up to Adair. He stares with dull eyes as if he's trying to place him. What is this? You aren't one of my flock. How did you get here? Adair ignores Boche, keeping careful eye contact with Baron. Lower that. Let's talk. Baron waits, the vial now clutched in one hand at chest height. You have doubts about this. You're questioning, just like your mother must have taught. Your mom knew how to spot a fake. What do you think she'd say about him? Adair nods toward Boche. How could I know? She left me here. The vial in Bear's hand hovers now just above waist height. What is faith if it isn't tested? These people are willed here by Aethus to challenge you. Make him proud. I will make him proud. It sounds almost like a recitation. Adair's mouth is open, but he has no answer. He looks to you, desperation in, t in his eyes. Hmm. I have seen evidence of the true nature of the gods. You're wise to question. Maybe he's not testing faith. Maybe he's testing if you can think for yourself. But our faith, isn't that what the gods ask of us? Baron's hand lowers. It hangs at his right side, the vial dangling. Aethus has come just as I said he would. There will be no other chances. Hedair fumes at Boche, his hand drifting toward his weapon. He must be in need to reach out to us. Effigy's eyes, kid. You think your tiny soul's gonna change his fate? Hmm. Hedair is right. On the margin, the impact of a single added soul would be infinitesimal. Right, that's a... Uh, that's the basic idea. But he... he has called for us. Baron's expression s shifts suddenly. He looks like someone who's been slapped hard across the face. His fingers relax and the vial clatters to the ground, spattering the deck with what might easily be mistaken for a gruesome bloodstain. Aethys, forgive me. Adair takes what sounds like his first breath in a while. His fingers trace over his mouth and beard in a rhythm of reassurance. As you wish, then. Abandon your god. For betrayal there can be no forgiveness. You will receive not his mercy, but his justice. All acts can be forgiven by a truly benevolent god. Don't you got somewhere you need to be, Bosch? If you're having second thoughts, I can help you follow through. Not a one. Bosch smiles and raises his vial toward Adair in a toast. He downs the fluid in a single gulp. The Shining God will light the way. He barely gets the sentence out before the first spasms rack his frame. A reddish froth bubbles from his lips and he collapses to the floor, flopping and arcing like a netted fish. In one final, rigid convulsion, his breath stops and his body settles heavily on the deck in an unnatural pose. Think he's alright? He looks a little seasick. I'd kill him again if I could. Baron stares silently at Kadarian Bosch. Spittle bubbles on the lips of the corpse are still popping. That would have been me. If I were stronger, it would have been me. Lucky you weren't stronger then. The gods might have rights to our souls, but they got no right to our lives. 
Seems to me they'll take from you whatever's not nailed down if you let them. I could devote my entire life to Aethys, and it would never redeem this. Adair swallows and tries to say something. In the end, he just nods. For right now, let's just get you home. Yeah. Let's get him somewhere he can be safe. Uh, this episode, I'll let it go a little long. We'll go take it. We'll go take him back to Hasongo. Once he's safe, we'll end the episode. Oh! You blink, and find yourself standing in the knee-high grass of an endless field, with the day just falling into dusk. You know what? I think we're about to have a long conversation, so I'm gonna go ahead and end this episode here, then. I did not see this coming. Next episode, I think we're about to have a conversation with the gods again. Bit of an interruption that I did not expect. That'll be in the next episode, so until then, I am Chester44, I'll say an anis fly. That is Laniara, this has been a Let's Play of Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire, and I shall see you all next time.